declaring the end from the beginning. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Bear fruit to God that your fruit should remain. Grace to you and perfect peace from the Most High Elohim, our Father and our Master Yahusha HaMashiach. Thank you for plugging into this last video series about the name of the Incomprehensible One. And with my finite words, I've tried to convey what the name of the Infinite One means to me personally. When we see in John 15, 16, our Messiah telling his disciples, that whatsoever you shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He then repeats the same phrase in John 16, 23, but with an added dose of assurance. He says, whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. So I started asking myself these three questions. What's in the name? Who's behind the name? And in this presentation, we will continue our quest of finding out how we appropriate the name. How do we appropriate the incomprehensible name of our Creator, our provider, our salvation and finisher of our faith? Peter tells us in his first letter that we have been given everything pertaining to life and godliness in Mashiach, allowing us to be partakers of his divine nature. The El Shaddai, the Almighty, has extended to us an invitation to become a part of his divine nature in his set-apart family. Can you imagine that? He's given us the key to his home. He's given us faith. He is the faith of our salvation. His son Yahusha has given us the freedom from the slavery of sin and all the crookedness of it. He has given us manifold abilities to escape the enemy's entrapments, the power to leave this snare and time-bound world. He has given us the knowledge of Mashiach so we can become worthy of bearing his name. We are all learning to exist as sons and daughters of the Most High so that we can express His nature here on earth through bearing the fruit of His Ruach. We've been given the faith and freedom to bear the fruit of His family name. We have been given the seed of His immutable nature of love, and He is looking for fit vessels to carry His name. Let's try to see if we can track down the etymology of this tetragrammaton yod heh wah -He. In my search of finding the etymology of the name yod heh wah -He, I came across this website called Abarim Publications. I'm going to be quoting from the articles on this site. I will have the link to this website in the description link below for you to check out. The letter yod heh wah -He is a very old and it's generally assumed that the source texts of the Torah already contained it, likely even the Book of the Covenant which Moses read aloud to the Israelites contained it too. The name became, or had always been, unpronounceable. And wherever the text called for yod heh wah -He, a reader would pronounce the Hebrew word for Lord, namely Adonai. In the Middle Ages, the Masoretes began to fear that the traditional pronunciation of the written text might become lost and inserted symbols to help preserve it. That caused the pronunciation of the word Adonai to be linked to the spelling of yod heh wah -He, which in turn resulted in the impossible hybrid name, Jehovah. Other Jewish traditions handled the vocalization of yod heh wah -He by inserting the word Hashem, which is the word for name. Keep in mind that the Hebrew language is far more dynamic than our modern languages. 
It has been long supposed that yote wahe was derived from the verb that is used to make I am, namely haya in Hebrew, which means to be or to become. We know ancient Hebrew language did not have vowels, so the name yod heh may be an artificial construct of the Hebrew language's available vowels. But before we start disliking this idea, let's think about its usefulness to this present time. We moderns are so used to reading and writing that we often forget what an incredible miracle the alphabet is. It took many peoples, many millennia to develop it and the main contribution of the Hebrews was the invention of vowel notation. Vowel notation was the capstone that completed the alphabet and which made the previously esoteric art of writing and reading available to the masses. Prior to vowel notation, script was basically a mnemonic tool that helped specifically trained priests to memorize sacred texts. Script allowed anybody to be a priest and give an entire nation a collective living memory. The alphabet quite literally allowed nations to become alive and be endowed with a singular living and thinking mind in precisely the same way in which the creator had once collected the dust of the earth into a viable body and infused into that body the breath of life. So let's set our basis in the dialogue between the Most High and Moses in Exodus chapter 3 when Yahuwah was giving Moses his mission. In Exodus 3.13, Moses says unto Yahuwah, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, hath sent me unto you. Note, though, that it doesn't stop there. Verse 15, Elohim said moreover unto Moshe, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh Elohim of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. The verb that is used to make I am really indicates an action that intimately reveals the nature of the one who is doing the acting. Ahaya, ashar, ahaya, I am who I am. I will become what I choose to become. It's such a beautiful name for us not only to understand what it means, contemplate the meaning behind the name, but also for us to know, learn, and apply the power behind the name in our everyday walk of faith as followers of our Mashiach. Let's ponder Psalm 18.9 for a minute. It says, He bowed the heavens also and came down. This is speaking of the Most High. And if you think back in Genesis, in the creation of Adam, think of him descending to pick up dust from the ground and blowing his neshama, his breath of life, unto Adam's nostrils, and he became a living being. Ahaya, Ashar, Ahaya is the one that causes that which is to be. And it is in this belief mercy and truth, that we are that which the one has caused us to be. The word of Yahuwah, his son given to us. He chooses to reveal his love to us according to his will and good pleasure in order that we also can become his miniature representatives of love in accordance to his purposes established for us. Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of Yah. Hearing is more than just receiving the communication, also comprehending what is being made known. So everything that we've ever learned and understood makes up our belief system. Let's do a thought exercise for a minute. Who are you without your belief system? 
Have you ever thought that everything that makes up you is based on what you believe? And what you believe is made up of all your memories, both conscious and subconscious. If that which you believe is taken away from you, then what is left of you? So is with the incomprehensible Yahuwah al Shaddai. This same principle is true of him. Everything revealed to us about our creator is based on what he has done for us, what he continues to do and what he will do for us. Yahuwah is love and this is everlasting and immutable nature of the Most High. This is the nature of the name above all name, the Ancient of Days who has no beginning and no end. This tells us that since the beginning of time, for us as finite beings, none of us who discovered sounds, light, words, pronunciation, none of those things would ever be capable of knowing for sure what the Ancient of Days name is. And so mankind does his best in attributing with our finite minds how we can allude to the one whose name cannot be perfectly uttered in this dimension. So there's no letter, sounds, words that can be put together known to the human tongue that can be a translational match, not even close to the true name of the Most High. Perhaps that's how it was intended to be because we are not meant to focus in the physical aspect, the five physical sensical senses that we as humans are able to put our confidence in, given that all things are revealed to us in part for the time being. See, the first appearance of the Tetragrammaton is in Genesis 2-4. When the text is getting ready to unveil the creation of the Garden of Eden, or the Garden of Delight. So if you look at the first appearance of Yahuwah Elohim in Genesis 2-4, and take a look at the root of yod heh wah yod heh wah is the existing one, static in nature, immutable, unchanging forevermore, hidden behind the word Yahuwah Elohim, or yod heh wah that first appears in Genesis 2-4, is the verb Hayah. Ah, I am. So now remember, John says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh. Yahuwah is love, and Haya is love in action. Think of love becoming. This is the I am. And so Ahaya is dynamic in its proper use. We see the same verb that makes I am appear also in Genesis 1.3. Where it says, then Elohim said, Haya light, and Haya light. Let there be light, and light became. This is what was referred to by John, where he says, in the beginning was the word, and goes on and says, in him, in the word, in him was a life, and the life was the light of man. Do you see how connected these things are? But notice that before light became, there became emptiness and darkness. And so the same verb that makes I am, haya, meaning to be or to become. In Genesis 1-2, you see that the earth became without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. When I look at that, I, I think of a beautiful picture of the death and resurrection of our Mashiach, hinted at the very first few verses of Genesis. The verb that makes I am, according to Exodus 6.3, was not made known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because the incomprehensible one appeared to them as El Shaddai. He was all sufficient to them. So why would the Creator introduce His name to the patriarchs of the faith as El Shaddai? So what was the purpose? We know that Abraham himself was raised and influenced by none other than Noah and Shem. So the names of the ones who surrounded Abraham as he was growing up, tells you a little bit about what his life was like. His life was lived in rest of the name that was revealed to him by the Most High. 
Noah's name means rest, and interestingly, Shem's name means name. So the name that was made known to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was done on purpose. Ecclesiastes 3 1 says, For everything there is an appointed time, and an appropriate time for every activity on earth. In King James Version, it says, And a time to every purpose under the heaven. Interestingly, the term every purpose or an appropriate time, Strong's H2656, means delight or pleasure. So the name that the Most High revealed to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was in his delight and good pleasure. So the purpose in appropriating his name to the patriarchs as Elohim El Shaddai was because, in simple terms, he was all sufficient to them. And so this is how they know the Creator. So the three patriarchs, Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac, shares the same position of freedom. The three of them were born free to walk out their purposes. The Most High says to Abraham in Genesis 17, 1, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And so they were free to walk and bear the fruit of their established purposes in the Most High. Yahweh to them was the all-sufficient Elohim, and in response, all they had to do was walk before Him and be perfect or blameless. In contrast to the children of Israel born into slavery outside of the influence of Noah and Shem, they, the children of Israel, did not have the same state of rest or freedom as the patriarchs did. And so the name of the Creator was revealed to them in such a way that will bring them out of slavery. The Most High will be known to them by His outstretched hand. The name Ahaya Ashar Ahaya was made known to the children of Israel for the purposes of bringing out the desires of their souls, unconscious to them for hundreds of years, and yet it is within them there is this desire to remember who their Creator is. It is within them, and it is through the name Ahaya Ashar Ahaya that their Creator becomes what they need Him to be. And so I am that I am. Ahaya Ashar Ahaya is the I am who will redeem the children of Israel out of the house of slavery. And so how is the Creator the I am that I am for the children of Israelites? The name that has a dynamic purpose comes with dynamic conditions. And so the Creator, the Redeemer of Israel, reveals Himself to them by the seven I wills that is found in Exodus 6, verse 6 to 8. These action words manifest the dynamic conditions of His power, revealing to the children of Israel who He is, His reputation, who He is will be revealed to them in what He is about to do, what He will become for them. Exodus chapter 6 verse 68 says, Therefore say to the children of Israel, I am yod heh I am Yahuwah. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rescue you from their bondage. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgments. I will take you as my people and I will be your God. Then you shall know that I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, who brings you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And I will give it to you as a heritage. I am Yahuwah. You see how the words of Solomon in Exodus 3.17 validates that there is an appropriate time for every activity and there is a time of judgment for every deed. And so knowing that there is a purpose according to his delight or good pleasure for Abraham, Jacob, and Isaac to know their creator as El Shaddai, Elohim Almighty, and that there is an appropriate time for the Creator 
to cause the children of Israel to remember he is their Ahaya Ashar Ahaya. And this gives us a wonderfully profound lesson for us to learn that there is an appropriate time, a causality in how we are to handle and carry our Creator's name, how we are to ask in expectation according to His good will so that we are found faithful in keeping the third commandment in that we are not to misuse or take the name of our Yahuwah Elohim in vain. If you take the root meaning of Ahaya, which is to be, become, exist, or happen, the root Haya is found all over the 66 books of the Bible as treasures hidden in plain sight, waiting to be unearthed by the diligent student of the word. Those who are walking the path of a Melchizedek priest or priestess, what is known and revealed to the patriarchs in the name El Shaddai is faith, freedom, fruit of the family of the Most High. What is then revealed in the name Ahaya Ashar Ahaya is faith in action. To believe, to be alive, to be live. So our faith, that is the static existence that's given to us by the Most High. But that static existence of the faith given to us comes with a dynamic condition that we are to apply. So for us to apply faith, we are to believe. Just playing with the words, you can see be live or be alive, become alive. We literally exist as image bearer of the Most High. So let's take the word freedom. Freedom is a static existence that we all want to be in. <laughs> Who doesn't want to be free? But what's the dynamic condition of our freedom, of what it means to be free, and that is free to become His image bearer on earth. For us to be free to exist in His purposes that He's established for us, and that is to make His will on earth happen as it is in heaven. And through these, we will be known by His fruit. All of the fruit of the Spirit is summed up in one, and that is love. Love, again, is another static existence, state of being. So what is the dynamic aspect of love or the ahaya, ashar ahaya of love is that we become love. And so that we are beloved. We exist as supernatural, out of this world kind of love beings. We are the Most High's individual expressions of His love on earth. So in a sense, Ahaya is our very breath that allows us to express our faith, our belief in the Most High. It is in His becoming our breath is the reason why we are living and alive and be able to come into being. We are to become His established purposes. In conclusion of this three-part video series, the etymology of yod heh wah can't really be tracked, nor can it be readily interpreted. Remember, His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. It's not how you say or pronounce or spell or write his name. And if you hold that special belief, special disposition in how to refer and how to pronounce and how to say the name of the Most High in your heart, and that's okay. The level of understanding that we all have in each of our personal journey is all done on purpose and in his time. But just realize that anything that can be limited by our five senses, anything that is externally perceived can be used as a tool by the enemy to hide the heart issue or what's really going on inside us. Know the craftiness of the enemy, even in making the simple complicated, causing divisions in the faith. The enemy is way older than us, and he is way smarter than us outside of our Mashiach. And this is why we place our trust in the preservation given to us by our Maker. How? In the keeping of his commandments. This is why our Messiah says the first and greatest commandment is to love. Yahuwah the Most High Elohim, love him with all our heart, our soul, and our mind. 
And the second is equally important, and that is to love our neighbor as ourselves. So how do we appropriate the name of the Most High? How do we delight in His purposes for revealing His name in His perfect timing? Three main things. We enter through the door of our Mashiach. So that's the way. Number one, the way. Everyone who calls in the name of Yahuwah will be saved. Romans 10, 13. When we believe in His name, we place our trust in what His name provided. And that's Yahusha. Yahuwah's salvation in His death, burial, and resurrection. 2 Timothy 2, 11 says, Here is a trustworthy saying. If we died with Him, we will also live with Him. So the first thing is the way. The second thing in how we appropriate the name of the Most High is through the truth. We follow the truth. The truth of our Mashiach. The truth is our Messiah. Ahaya became our salvation. His son Yahusha brought the truth to life. Truth literally walked the earth as an example for us. So think about it. The Torah, the law of the Most High, took on flesh and modeled for us truth that we can all follow and so that we can become. We can become what? Or who do we become? Well, we become followers of Yahusha. If you look at the word be ye, followers of Yahusha, the Greek of the phrase be ye is also to become, which is the same root meaning of Ahaya. Finally, we appropriate his name by giving birth to the fruit of his spirit. Galatians 5.14 says, For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. 1 Corinthians 13.13 13 says, Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. We are to be loved. This is what David's name means. And remember, David is known to be a man after Yahuwah's own heart because he did the will of Yahuwah. I trust that this has been a delight to you as much as it has been a delight to me in looking into the word and gaining a layer of understanding behind the name of the Most High. It's truly been a testimony of love, of Yahuwah's faithfulness, bringing about the realization of the freedom we have in Him. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 16 says, Whenever anyone turns to Yahuwah, the veil is taken away. Now Yahuwah is spirit, and where the spirit of Yahuwah is, there is freedom. Until next time, be still and know. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you.